Hi. I like to believe that most people are generous, honest, gentle, nice people just going about their business the same way that I do. I know that that's true, but the other 1%, the outliers, those people tend to like to congregate where tourists go. And as a lover of historic sites, places, world heritage sites, natural wonders, I know I'm going to run into them now and again. Hi, I'm Jen. Welcome or welcome back to the channel. I make videos about my life as a 50-something silver and solo pre-retirement Gen Xer. And this video is about safety tips for traveling alone. So here are 14 safety tips for traveling when you're single that have helped me stay safe. And if not worry-free, at least worry less. Number one. When I was backpacking around Thailand way back in the day, solo, I caught a train from Suratani to Bangkok. It's an overnight train. And so I had a little cubby with a drop down bench where I slept. In addition to my huge backpack, I also had a smaller bag that I was carrying my camera equipment around in. Foreshadowing or what? Anyhow, my little cubbyhole was a shared one and it was accessible to anyone. There was no lock on the door, but I really wanted to sleep. So I put my backpack against the wall and I hugged my camera pack to the front of me with both of my arms and I slept like a baby. This principle of keep your valuables close and keep them in front of you still works today. Carry your purse crossbody and in front of you. Keep your money, cards, travel documents in a money belt you can wear under your clothes. Keep a small amount of change, a photocopy of your passport, and one credit card available in a pocket or a bag that's easily accessible to you for daily use. Number two, for even more security when you're paying for things, set up and use your digital wallet on your phone. Check before you go, but most countries now, post-pandemic, all have mobile payment technology in place. It's easy because you've already got your phone already close to you. It's either in your hand or in a pocket or a zippered area that you can get to very quickly. No more fumbling around with grabbing things in the bottom of your bag or showing people how much you've got. Just tap and pay. Check with your phone manufacturer for steps to set it up and secure it, but it's really easy. My parents, both in their 80s, use it and they love it. Now, will there be places that do not accept the mobile pay technology? Yes, absolutely. You should always have a small amount of cash and a credit card ready for use. But in today's age and in most touristy spots, mobile pay is the way to go. Number three, while we're talking about keeping money and valuables safe, don't bring anything on your trip with you that you wouldn't mind losing. Designer purses, watches, and jewelry are lovely, but do you really need to bring them with you on your trip? Designer anything and blingy anything are literally meant to catch the eye and announce that you can afford nice things. I mean, making your sister-in-law or your neighbors envious of your brand new purse is one thing, but showing off to a thief who may covet the same thing is something entirely different. If you have to bring something expensive or flashy because you're going to a wedding or a posh event, then keep it under wraps until the time of the event and try not to show it off. Number four, Schedule your departures and your arrivals in daylight. There's nothing worse or scarier or more stressful than arriving somewhere new that you don't know, you've never been before, you don't speak the language perhaps, and you're not quite sure where you're going, and it's also dark out. Know ahead of time how you'll get to your hostel or your hotel. Pre-book an airport transfer or know ahead of time where the taxi stand at the airport is. Number five, five. Know a few useful phrases in the local language. You don't have to be fluent, 
But being able to say yes, no, thank you, do you speak English, can go a long way in keeping you out of trouble. I don't know how many times I use the phrase Eiko o hanamaska on a subway platform in Tokyo asking if someone spoke English to navigate the spider web that is the Tokyo underground. Number six, don't get distracted and don't look lost. One of the most common tactics thieves use to pickpocket travelers is to use a distraction. Some might try to talk to you or ask you to help them or come to their friend's shop, while others might wait until a prearranged spectacle happens before trying to steal something. Be aware and keep your valuables close and in front of you. Never walk around looking lost. You paint a target on your back right away. Don't walk with your head down looking at your phone for GPS directions or at a map looking at directions. If you need to study a map or your phone, find a shop, sit down and do it there. One tip, if you do wear ear pods, you can wear just one and walk around listening to GPS instructions while gazing from side to side and not looking lost. Number seven, try to blend in. Don't wear clothes that advertise that you're a tourist. Research beforehand what people usually wear in the city that you're visiting at that time of year. Research customs beforehand so you don't make any social faux pas or offensive gestures as well. Number eight, mark your phone map with your accommodation and where you want to go. So pin them, that way you'll never be lost. You can always get back to your hotel, your accommodation, wherever you're staying by showing a taxi driver the pin that you've got on your phone. But remember to keep your real-time location private when posting on social media. Don't let anyone know where you are exactly in the moment. Delay posting for a day or so, or even just wait until you return from your trip to make all of your postings. Number nine, check your government travel site before you leave. Your government likely has information on the travel documents you require for travel, as well as any warnings for your destination. I'm gonna put links in the description for travel alerts for the UK, the US and Canada. You can also register with your embassy and let them know you're going to be in country and for how long. I registered with the Canadian Embassy when I went to Peru on a three-week trip and also when I was living in Japan. I'll post links in the description for the US and Canada for registering with your government. I couldn't find one for the UK. Number 10, travel insurance. Buy it, duh. I have travel insurance through my employer and I buy trip cancellation insurance as I need it. It keeps life simple and safe to buy insurance before you go, but if you forget and you're already at your destination and you don't have insurance and before anything bad has happened, you can still purchase insurance on the go. World Nomads Insurance allows you to buy insurance, travel insurance, while you're out of country, but you need to buy it before you need it. I'll post a link in the description to World Nomads Insurance. I think there must be other companies who do this as well, but World Nomads is the only one that I know of for sure. It's really helpful also if you run out of your insurance because you decided to stay a little bit longer. And so you've got, you know, three or four days extra that you're not going to be insured for. Just grab the extra insurance while you're out of country. I know nothing bad's going to happen in the last four days, but you never know. Number 11, I'm running out of fingers. Um, don't tell people you're alone. As a woman traveling alone, I've often been asked, you know, where's your husband, your boyfriend, your partner, your kids? Um, I, I rarely tell people, oh, it's just me. I'll vaguely point over there or I'll say, you know, my boyfriend's in the washroom or I'll wave at someone across the street like I know them just to make it look like I'm traveling with someone and I'm not alone. Number 12, 
have a plan and share it with someone at home. A timeline of where you'll be, where you're staying, and how long you plan to be there. Contact numbers for the hotel or resort or tour company that you're using. Check in with friends and family often, or even at predetermined times. If something terrible were to happen, you'll get help faster if someone knows where you were supposed to be on that day. Thirteen. I don't even have 13 fingers, so forget it. Thirteen. Use cloud storage. Cloud storage allows you to access your documents anywhere in the world. You'll be able to keep a backup of important documents, photos, etc. anywhere that you are. Microsoft OneDrive, Dropbox, and Google Drive are examples of cloud storage. Keep a digital copy of your passport, your driver's license, and any other forms of ID you may need in the cloud and a paper copy in a separate place from the real one. And finally, number 14, use a VPN. A VPN is a virtual private network. It's an application that will run on your phone or your computer and it encrypts your data and conceals your location. That makes it harder for hackers to steal your password and other valuable data. It's the only way to ensure that all data you send from your computer or your phone over a network is secure and not being read by other people. So online banking on the hotel's free Wi-Fi is a no-no without a VPN. I'm gonna link in the description a couple of VPN providers that I have used in the past. They're good ones. They're not the only ones out there by a far cry and I am not affiliated with them or sponsored with them. I've just used them and I like them and I know that they work. So that's it, 14 safety tips for traveling alone. Let me know in the comments if you have any more tips, tricks or hacks that can be used for traveling alone. Everyone would love to hear.